Hey guys, I'm Avesh. This is the 34th video of .NET MA UI with Sync Fusion Control series. In the previous session, we discussed the features of Sync Fusion Map Control and explored custom map markers, arc layers, and polyline features. Please review the previous session before proceeding. In this session, we will focus on the features of Sync Fusion Barcode Generator Control. The barcode generator control is a data visualization control that is used to generate and display data in the machine readable format using industry standard one dimensional and two dimensional barcodes. It encodes input values using supported symbology. Sync Fusion barcode control has the ability to generate various types of barcodes such as QR codes, UPCA, UPCE, EAN13, EAN8 code 39, code 128, etc. and so on. Developers would typically be able to customize the appearance and content of the generated barcodes based on their application requirements. Syncfusion also integrates the barcodes with device cameras or external barcode scanners to scan and decode barcodes within the .NET MA UI application. These features would be essential for application running barcode scanning functionality such as inventory management or ticketing systems. Option to customize the appearance and behavior of barcode components including barcode size, color, alignment, error collection levels for QR codes and more. This flexibility allows developers to tailor the barcode components to match and design and brand their applications. The barcode also supports for dynamic data binding to dynamically generate barcodes based on data from the applications model or from the view model. This feature simplifies the process of generating barcodes for dynamic or data-driven scenarios. Let's now take a look into the common types of barcodes that can be generated using Syncfusion barcode control. The universal product code or UPCA which is commonly known as is a numeric symbology used in worldwide retail applications. UPCA barcodes are widely used for retail product identification and consists of 12 numerical digits. UPCA symbols consist of 11 data digits and 1 check digits. The first digit is a number digit that normally represent the type of product being identified. Similar to UPCA, UPCE symbology supports only numeric characters. It is a zero suppressed version of UPCA symbology where it uses only six digits of product code and does not use the middle guard. EAN13 is based on the UPCA standard. It encodes the 12 digits of input data with the check digit at its end. The difference between UPCA and EAN13 is that the number system used in EAN13 consists of two digits ranging from 00 to 99, whereas the number system used in UPCA consists of single digits from 0 to 9. EAN8 is equivalent to UPCE for small packaging details. It is shorter than EAN13 barcode and longer than UPCE. It encodes 7 digits of numeric data with the check digit at its end. I have not listed the EAN8 over here. However, we will learn the EAN8 while we switch into the coding session. Code 39 is a popular alphanumeric barcode symbology that can encode uppercase letters, numbers and a few special characters. Code 39 is a common barcode type used for various labels such as name badges, inventory and industrial applications. The symbology of the code 39 character set consists of barcode symbols representing number 0 to 9, uppercase letters A to Z and the special characters. Code 39 extended is another extended version of Code 39 where lower characters and special characters are additionally supported. Code 93 was designed to complement and improve Code 39. It is used to represent the full ASCII character set by using combination of two characters. Code 93 can encode uppercase letters, numeric digits, and a handful of special characters. Code 128 is a high density barcode symbology that can encode the full 128 ASCII character set. The barcode is used as a basis for many other barcodes like UCC, EAN, HIBC which is a health industry barcode and the blood bank industry. Along with this, we have QR code which is called as quick response code is a popular two dimensional barcode. It can efficiently store more information in a smaller space than 1D barcodes. 
each barcode can store values up to 70 89 characters it is mostly used for urls payments business cards contact information and more the qr code uses versions from 1 to 40 version 1 measures 21 modules into 21 2 measures 25 to 25 and so on the number of modules increases in steps of 4 module per side up to version 40 which measures 177 modules by 177 modules each version has its own capacity by default the barcode control automatically sets the version according to the length of the input text these qr barcodes are designed for industrial uses and also commonly used in consumer advertising data matrix is another two-dimensional barcode symbology that can encode large amounts of data in a small space the information can be encoded with text or numeric values each barcode can store up to 2335 characters data matrix barcode will be mostly used for courier parcel food industry and more let's now take a look into the common use cases for barcodes uses scenarios the barcodes are extensively used in inventory management systems with sync fusion tools developers can build applications that generate and scan barcodes for tracking inventory items managing stock levels and streamlining the overall inventory management pro process barcodes are used in the retail and point of sale systems for product identification and pricing barcode generation capabilities can be leveraged to produce barcode labels for products while barcode scanning functionalities can be integrated into the POS system for quick and accurate product identification during checkout asset tracking barcodes are commonly used for asset tracking in various industries such as manufacturing logistics and healthcare sync fusion barcode tools can be utilized to create and scan barcodes for tracking assets like equipment vehicles medical devices and more barcodes are often used in document management systems for indexing and categorizing the documents sync fusion's components can assist in generating barcodes that can be printed on documents making it easier to organize and retrieve them later Barcodes are frequently employed in event ticketing and access control systems. Sync Fusion's barcode generation tools can be used to create unique barcodes for tickets, while barcode scanning functionalities can be integrated into the entry points to validate tickets and grant access to events. Overall, Sync Fusion's barcode functionalities offer developers a versatile set of tools to incorporate barcode generation and scanning capabilities into their applications facilitating various use cases across different industries and domains now that we understood the theory of the barcode and how to use the barcodes in sync fusion let's now switch to the coding session and get going i'll be using the same solution that we have been using from the previous sessions notice that i have right click on this project clicked on manage nuget packages and i have already installed syncfusion.net maui barcode control and the current version that I am using is 23.136. I'll be upgrading it soon, but right now with the current license what I have got, I'm using 23.x version of this file. Let me right click on the view, add a new item and choose .NET MAUI. Similar to the previous session, let me choose the content page XAML file and replace it as barcode and click on add. Notice that we now have the barcode.xaml file let me switch to the Syncfusion MAUI toolbox, drag and drop the barcode right after this vertical stack layout. The moment I do that, notice that at line number 3, we have XML namespace barcode with the assembly of Syncfusion MAUI barcode. Let's start adding the barcodes that we have discussed in the theory session. Let me remove this vertical stack layout completely and replace it with content page.content. Within this content, let me add a scroll view with vertical options as fill and then vertical scroll bar visibility to always. That's because we are going to add the barcodes one after the other. Within this scroll view, let me add a stack layout with some margins in the top. I may add a margin 20, 10 and then I'll give the horizontal options as center. Within this stack layout, I'm going to add another horizontal stack layout and add a margin to this horizontal stack layout as well. And within this, let me start adding a barcode colon SF barcode generator with some margin. Let me add the margin. Let me add this barcode. Within this barcode, 
I'm going to add a barcode, SF barcode generator dot symbology. Within that, we are going to have a barcode type that we have discussed earlier. Look at that. We are now prompted with different options to choose right from code bar with 128 data matrix EN13, EN8 and QR code. Let me start with code bar and I will say module equal to 2 and then close this one. Let me add few more customizations to this barcode generator after the margin. I'm going to add a foreground color and add it as light green and show text equal to true. So we're going to show the text for which we are converting it into a barcode. Now for this code bar, we are going to give a value of some random value I picked, which is a nine digit value and save this. So in order to determine that which barcode we are rendering, let me add another vertical stack layout within this barcode. In the vertical stack layout, let me add a couple of labels. Let me add other properties for this label, stating that this is a coda bar that we are using. After this label, I'm going to add another label which will actually denote that what text are we converting it into a barcode. So this will have a margin, font family, font size, line breakup mode, line height and the text that supports the coda bar and the text color. I'm giving some random text color. I can say light gray and then let me run this application and notice the output. There is an error at the margin. I have an extra comma over here. Let me remove that and run this application. Before running the application, we have to do one more code change. So let me stop the application, switch to the solution explorer and within the app shell.xaml file, I'm going to choose the flyout item, rename it as barcode in the title, add the same to the route as well as to the title. And within this, I'm going to choose the view as barcode and run this application so that this will be our first page. Notice that the output is not displaying the barcode. However, it is displaying the labels such as the type of the barcode and the characters that the barcode will support. Let me switch back and inspect the issue. Look at that. We don't have a width request here. Let me add the width request of 250 and switch back again. Notice that we now have the barcode which supports these properties. Similarly, I'm going to add rest of the barcodes one after the other so that you guys can experiment with rest of the barcode types and then we'll discuss the QR code as well. Let me stop the application, add the rest of the types of different types of barcodes and show you the output. Notice that I have added all the barcode types, chart code 39, extended, 93, 128, 128A, 128B. Sorry about that, I have made a mistake over here. And then we have UPC A, UPC E, EN 8, EN 13. Please feel free to explore all of the barcode types. Let's now switch back to the code and start adding the QR code and data matrix type of barcodes. So let me switch back to the application and stop the application and start adding the QR code to the top of this solution. Let me add a box view just before this horizontal stack layout and uh, let me add another barcode generator and use the QR code. So let me copy and paste the code from my other window, horizontal stack layout and within the stack layout, we're going to add the margin and height request for this stack layout, similar to what we have done for the others. And I'm going to add a barcode within the stack layout with a value of syncfusion.com MAUI controls. Now look at that, we have added the QR code as the barcode and hence the value could be a website or any other links as well. Now, in order to denote that, let me add another vertical stack layout, which will give some description to the value that we have added. That's all it is. So let me start the application and show you the output on how a QR code looks like. Look at that. We now have the QR code along with these barcodes. Similarly, we can use a data matrix to denote this value. The only difference between data matrix and the QR code is that the data matrix has got limited set of characters, whereas the QR code can hold many characters than the data matrix. So just above the QR code, let me add a data matrix as well. Let me save this application and show you the output. Look at that. We now have added the data matrix barcode as well. Using this QR code, let's now generate a simple entry pass to the Disney world. Let me show you how to do that. Let me add a scroll view right within the stack layout. So I'm going to add a scroll view and within the scroll view, I'm going to add a background color for this digital ticket. And within that, I'm going to add another stack layout 
Let me close this stack layout as well. And within this stack layout, let me start adding more properties with the labels denoting that it is a digital ticket and I'm adding another label saying it's your ticket to Disneyland. I have already downloaded a JPEG file from the internet which denotes on the ticket. So let me add a frame and a stack layout after this within this vertical stack layout and after this vertical stack layout. So let me add one frame with a corner radius and then within this frame I'm going to add different labels and box views. Also, I'm going to add a horizontal stack layout to denote the rest of the values as well. So within this, let me add the horizontal stack layout as well. Let me add the location of the Disneyland. Within this another stack layout, I'm, I'm going to add a separator which is a box view. So that right after the separator, I'm going to create a simple grid. And within that grid, I'm going to embed the barcode generator that generates a ticket value. It could be any value or the dynamic value or the GUID of the ticket so that the entry persons can scan the ticket and allow the guests into the Disneyland. That's it. Let's restart the application and notice the output. Notice that we have successfully created a digital ticket to Disneyland by using this QR code and the frame properties with the guest information and date and the price information as well as everything embedded as a UUID or the unique ID of this barcode where this ticket will be scanned and the entry will be granted for the guests. With this, we have successfully understood the Sync Fusion barcode control. In the next session, we'll look into the other component of Sync Fusion controls. Till then, thank you for listening and have a great day.